You should put a disclaimer like right at the beginning, like a little asterisk at the bottom. Don't disclaimer, look. don't look at my arms or if my you see fish's <laughs> arms, beware. <laughs> <laughs> if you see my spray tan, just just look away. It's, it's bad. <laughs> What's up, Bruin fans? Welcome back to this week's episode of Bruin Banter with our special guest, Madison Koshin. Thanks for being on the show, Maddie. Of course. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. So this past weekend, we competed against Arizona State on Monday, Martin Luther King Day. And Koshin over here got her first 10 of the season on bars. How exciting. I'm so excited. The 10 thief is rubbing off on her over I here. I guess so. That's why we're roomies. <laughs> Alongside Koshin's 10, there were also a lot of other highlights throughout this meet, so let's get into the meet recap. So we started off on ball, and Sakai made her collegiate debut, recovering from an ankle injury. Now she's back, and she hit a huge Yurchenko 1.5, scoring a 9.875. And she got so emotional after. It was so oh cute God, because she, you could tell like how much it really meant to her that she finally gets to compete in college. Nia rounded out the rotation with a flawless ball taking the landing and earning a perfect score of a 9.95. Nora had a near flawless routine, continuously improving every week, scoring a 9.975. I didn't even know like she got a 9.975. It's, like, it's huge, especially for a third meet for a freshman. And I was just kind of like in my zone chalking up, and I didn't notice until after the meet, like after I saw Twitter and everything. <laughs> and our guest of honor over here is scoring a perfect 10, your second career 10 on the uneven bars. How was that? It was really exciting. I don't think I was really, we had like a minor mistake from me early in the rotation, so I think I was kind of just doing it for the team, and that's what really took my mind off of everything. And I just went up there with like confidence, and I just wanted to do the best that I could for my team, and everything played out well. And as soon as you stuck the dismo, everybody just knew it was a 10. If you didn't get a 10, there would have been a riot. Like the den would have just attacked the judges. Like I don't, I don't know what would have happened. Yeah, I mean it just kind of comes down to judges after that. Right. But like, to me that was like the best that I could have done, mm -hmm. and so I felt good no matter what. Koshin had a solid routine, leading off the Bruins on the balance beam, scoring a 9.875 in the leadoff position, which is super difficult to do. You had the highest beam score of the rotation. How did that pressure and that kind of change to being leadoff um, affect like, your mentality? Or this week we decided to, I decided to switch with Riel just to kind of change things up and see how that went. Because it's been hard with having Gigi Grace Glenn out with an injury right now, and you've had to step up and play that leadoff position on beam, and that's a really tough spot to be in. I think um, Gigi's been like a great help outside of that. She's kind of been like the team captain on like beam, mm -hmm. and so she's definitely helped me with keeping my rhythm up, keeping my eyes up off the beam so that I can flow throughout the routine and really dial in on all the cues and all the landings. Yeah, definitely. We ended the meet with an epic dance party again. Kyla, Mars, and Kate all scoring 9.95s, which is the career best for Mars and Kyla. Yeah, I think all like, what was it? 10,200 something people. Right. All of our fans were on their feet dancing along. The din was great, the energy was great. It was really exciting. So the Bruins ended up with a 197.775, which is the first time that the Bruins have ever gone three 197s consecutively at the beginning of the season, which is crazy. It's really motivating, and I'm just really excited for the rest of the season because I can't imagine like what we're capable of when all of our lineups come together, all the pieces, puzzle pieces fit together. It's just, it's gonna be a show. Right, like I thought this meet, I mean, it was a really good meet. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was great. Right. I think there's still a lot of things that we hit in practice that we didn't hit this weekend, and I know everybody's been working really hard. I'm so excited to see what the end of the season is gonna look like because if we're doing this well already with not our best, Best. I'm just excited to see what's what's going to happen. I know. There's definitely something special in this team. Mm -hmm. Okay, Koshi, let's talk about you a little bit. So, you know, your freshman year, you competed all around. Last year, you competed three events, and now you're competing two events. What kind of has been going on with you? Because not a lot of people really know what's going on. It was super fun to compete all around my freshman year. Um, I think I was still running on adrenaline from the Olympics, quite honestly. And I had, like, a lot of injuries after that year, so I got my shoulder fixed up. Last year I was able to get back to three events, and this past summer um, I was training a little bit, but my leg was still bothering me. My knee started like collapsing on tumbling and stuff like that, so I had a stress fracture in my femur 
first and we took a lot of rest off like going to preseason and everything. It still wasn't feeling like that great so we got a second opinion and I have OCD in my knee. So basically I have um, like a part of your bone kind of chips off and because it was not enough blood flow to that area and so it's like cartilage pieces that are just floating around in there. So I decided to just take a step back and do what I could contribute, um, just trying to keep the pain at like a semi-normal level. Right. <laughs> so I think it also gives me more time just to kind of step into like a leadership role, just trying to find a little bit of like using my own voice and trying to help out the team as much as I can. You're stepping into this new leadership position. You're finding your voice, like you said, and it's giving you more opportunities to contribute to the team in other ways. And I think it's also helped you focus on those two events and making those really good. And that could like attribute to your 10 this past weekend in the third meet. Like, that's awesome. But yeah, I think you've really stepped into a leadership role. And a lot of girls and girls everywhere just look up to you as such a role model, including myself. Aww, and you. yeah, I think, I think it's a blessing in disguise. Yeah, me too. I think I really do think that everything happens for a reason. And so for me to be where I'm at right now, I'm really blessed with all the opportunities that I've been blessed with. So let's get into Twitter questions. All right, first person, Gymnast Relate asks, congrats on your perfect 10 on bars this week, Madison. Since this is your third year at UCLA, what are some of your favorite team traditions or special moments you've experienced as a Bruin? Um, thanks for the congrats. <laughs> um, I think some of the most special moments um, are always with my team. We, okay, so we spend like the whole morning together and then some of us have class together. And then anytime we see each other like outside the gym, we act like we haven't seen each other for like years. <laughs> so I think those are some of like the most special moments because we just like don't get tired of each other. Koshi, um, Mercedes and I, we're all roommates, right? And including Kyla, but Kyla doesn't really like the show that we're watching. Um, we have <laughs> Dexter dates, so we call them Dexy dates. I'll just hop into their room, yeah. hop in someone's bed, and then we'll be like, so Dexy time? So Dexy. <laughs> we'll be like studying Mercedes studies in her bed and like, I'll be like chilling in my bed or whatever. And then, we're, and then um, Koshi will walk in and jump on Mercedes bed and be like, so Dexy time? <laughs> and it's just like a fun little way to unwind, honestly. Like, just yeah, because, I love ending the nights like that. Yeah, for sure. We're always just like a family. So I think those are some of the most special moments. But like, I guess traditions, usually like on the road, we always do like blue versus gold challenges, you know? Yes, we do. And I think those are like some really fun things because it just takes our mind off of the competition the next day and we always get so competitive with each other. Kyla always <laughs> loves to rebuttal. Oh my goodness. If we get an answer right, she'll be like, nope, that was wrong. Kyla, it was She's not like, well, wrong. We have that one too. <laughs> Ellie Zimmerman too asks, what are your plans after you graduate? I've always loved working with kids and I like I feel like I know so much about my body. I've always I've always had the dream to be like a pediatrician or do something in the pediatric field. So I think I want to go to um, PA school and become a physician's assistant. This summer I'll be like interning with one of my surgeons. So I want to kind of get a feel of like the orthopedic side and maybe I'll be like a pediatric orthopedic PA. So it's kind of a blend of everything together. Um, but I don't know, just as long as I'm enjoying whatever I do, I think that's like the most important. But that's kind of what I have my mindset on now. Well, I just know if any one of my kids breaks their bones, <laughs> I'm going to be sending them to you, Coach, and so be prepared. Aww, <laughs> so piggybacking off of that question, Bethany Lobo asks, what lessons do you think you'll take from your gymnastics career into the medical profession post-graduation? I've learned so much from gymnastics, just like the work ethic and the commitment, the perseverance. So I think all of that, um, especially going to PA school, it's definitely going to be a lot of hard work. But I feel like gymnastics has taught me that like I always want to challenge. So just set goals each day to how can I help someone else this day in this day. And I think that's kind of just the life lessons that I've learned in gymnastics is just like never giving up, always wanting to do better and get that 1% better. Yeah, I feel like most gymnasts go into a profession or a field that is going to challenge them. It is going to present a new challenge to face every single day because that definitely prepares us for a life outside of the gym. Yeah. 100%. Thanks, Coach, for being on the show. It was nice having another roomie on the show. Aw, thanks for having me. It's so much fun. You're doing great as a host, too. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Don't forget to catch the Bruins this Sunday, January 27th at Stanford. And you can watch us on Pac-12 Network at 4 p.m. Don't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time. Bye. Bye.